Ciao friends! In this video, I want to analyze with you the performance of distinct count. We will see two different techniques to compute the distinct count of a column. One uses the regular distinct count function and moves the entire calculation through the storage engine. The other technique pushes the calculation through the formula engine. That is typically a bad thing, but as you are going to see, depending on the cardinality of the column and other characteristics of uh, your query, the result can be very different. So it's always good to have multiple ways of solving the same calculation, because depending on the scenario you are facing, you will be able to choose the right one. Let's get started. As I said, I want to analyze the performance of this thin count. So we start with this query. We have uh, a number of products, a measure that does the distinct count of the product key column. And then we embed the same measure inside a YTD. So it does it. Uh, sales number of products YTD computes the number of products with a dates YTD over date. Finally, everything is inside summarized columns by date. So for every day in 2009, this filter restricts only 2009, we compute the number of products YTD. So we will have on the 1st of January the number of products of the 1st of January, on the 2nd of January the 1st and the 2nd together with a distinct count. Let's run the query. I already enabled the, the server timings so we can run the query and don't remember how much it takes. Around uh, 4 seconds we have uh, the results and you see we have uh, the products uh, in the 1st of January, 1st and 2nd, 1st, 2nd and 3rd together but uh, we are interested in performance. So let's look at uh, the, query plan, the, the query plan, the server timings. Here we have a first indication, 4.5 seconds to run the query, 16 seconds of storage engine CPU. And uh, we need to look at uh, the details of uh, the storage engine queries executed. The first uh, XMS, XM SQL query retrieves uh, from the date table the date column, and this is needed in order to build the axis. The second query retrieves the dates in 2009, because we have this filter 2009 that restricts the calculation. The third query is the same as the second, so it probably goes to the cache. And then we have the actual queries that compute the distinct count. These are more interesting to look at. Let's increase that a bit, so we have more space to analyze the plan. Look at this query. It does a select a distinct count of product key from sales left outer join date because it needs to place a filter on date and do a distinct count on sales. And we have a work condition that contains two conditions. The first one that filters 365 values. This is uh, filtering all the dates in 2009 because remember we have a filter on 2009. So the first set of the first condition filter 2009. We have an end and then another condition that filters actually only one date. Why is it filtering one date? This is the query that actually retrieves the 1st of January. This condition it says uh, I want the distinct count for only the 1st of January. So this is the result we are retrieving. Then we have uh, other queries. We have plenty of them. We have the second query. And uh, look at that, the only difference between the first and the second is in the second condition. Now this is filtering two dates. The third is filtering three dates, then four dates, then five dates, and so on. We actually have one query for each day that computes the distinct count of the year to date of that given date. If you look at the number of queries, we have 368 queries which are the three queries uh, build, needed to build uh, the date, plus 365 queries, one for each date. Now, this is not surprising at all. This encount is non-additive. Therefore, in order to run the query, it cannot uh, compute values day by day and aggregate them later. The only option is to compute one query per each day. The H query by itself is very fast. The thing is, when you sum a lot of queries which are very fast, you might end up with a large execution time. And this is exactly what is happening here. 
we have a large number of storage engine query. Each one is very fast, but when you sum everything together, you end up having 4.5 seconds of execution time. It is neither good or bad. It is the time needed to compute uh, this calculation. But the important point was understanding why this execution, this execution time is made that way. Now, can we express the same distant count in a different way? Instead of running all these queries, we can ask the engine to do something different. What we are going to do is write the distant count in a different way using a SAMEX, an artificial SAMEX of 1, in order to force the calculation to the formula engine. So we reduce the storage engine query and we increase the formula engine time. This is typically bad. But, as you are going to see, depending on the cardinality, the results can be very interesting. Let's do that. Instead of doing a say, distant count of sales product key, we force the calculation to the formula engine by doing SMX over the distinct of sales product key, and we artificially sum 1. The numbers is the very same. But, as we are going to see, the technique used by DAX is very different. Let me run the query. The execution time in this specific calculation is not going to be very different. It's a bit faster, 3.7 seconds, so we saved uh, a bit less than one second. But the important point is uh, looking at the query plan. <clears throat> we have uh, the first query that uh, uh, retrieves uh, the date, the second that retrieves date in 2009, and the third is the very same. What is interesting is the fourth query, because you see that we have only one storage engine query. That retrieves uh, 166,000 rows, uh, so the materialization is much larger, and uh, it retrieves uh, <coughs> the date and uh, the product key. We do not have any distinct count here. It is retrieving just the date, and the product key, all the combinations. And uh, this is all what Storage Engine does, which means uh, that Formula Engine will then iterate over this table containing sales and product key and compute on top of it uh, the distant count date by day. We pushed uh, the entire calculation to the Formula Engine. As I said, this is typically a bad thing because Formula Engine is slower, but in this specific scenario, it is actually a bit faster, 3.7 seconds instead of 4.5 seconds. Now, is it... I mean, it's not all here, because the important thing, the important thing is understanding the query plan. Depending on the cardinality of the column, your results might be very different. If you focus on how this second query has been executed, the engine retrieved the set of date and product key. So the size of this table depends on the cardinality of data, which is given, and on the cardinality of the product table. The more products you have, the larger this table will become, the slower Formula Engine will be in scanning the table. So we can check what happens if we change the column and we use columns with different cardinality in order to have different results. Let's do that. This first version uses the product key, and uh, let's remember it's 166,000. Now, we can get rid of product key and, for example, use the customer key. We can replace uh, product with uh, customer. Replace everything, and now I'm doing uh, a distinct count of sales customer key and I'm computing the number of customers. Let's start with uh, the version that uses distant count. We run it. I do not expect that to be much different than the version with the product. It's a bit faster indeed, 3.3 seconds, and we still have 368 storage engine queries. The very same query plan, nothing changed if we use the distant count. What if we use SAMEX over distinct? Now, the thing is, Contoso has around 2.5 thousand products and 18 thousand customers. So the cardinality of customers is much larger than the cardinality of product. 
and I would expect this table to be larger. Indeed, you see, it took 11 seconds. Earlier it was faster, now it is much slower. And the reason is the size of the table that has been materialized is much larger. It was 160,000 rows, now it's 360,000 rows. It is so large that Formula Engine is now much slower. What if we reduce the cardinality? Instead of using customer, we can use promotion that has many, uh, that has a small number of values. So let's do that. And instead of using customer, we use promotion. Now the query is doing a distinct count of promotion key or some X of promotion key, as we did earlier. First, we run the version with distinct count. And again, I do not expect that to be very different from the previous one because it still need to run 368 queries. So 2.8 seconds, a bit faster, but 368 queries. If instead of using distinct count, we use some X, now, because promotion has a small number of values, I would expect the materialized table to be smaller, therefore the engine should be faster. And indeed it is. Now you see that the, the table that is materialized only contains 79,000 values and the, the execution time went from 3.5 seconds to 34 milliseconds. So now the difference is very relevant. As you have seen, the performance of using uh, distinct count or using some x over distinct is very different and it depends on the cardinality of uh, the columns. It might depend on other factors. You always are in charge of uh, testing uh, different formulas and uh, evaluating the results <coughs> in your specific model. So whenever you need to compute formulas and you want to optimize them, be prepared to spend some time to learn the details of storage engine, formula engine, how to read the query plan, because uh, these skills will be, will be invaluable over time. Enjoy DAX! Mm -hmm.